Sensing, SE versus SI, how can you really tell the difference? Well, you gotta use your sensory. <laughs> Already, really? All right, if you've been halfway paying attention, we've been breaking things down to a cross check between the human needs and the functions. So the biggest way you tell the difference between the two of SC and SI is you're looking for how does somebody gather information or how are they organizing information. Everybody has SE or SI. And then the other thing to remember is they either have it as a savior or a demon. So they may be gathering facts, but they hate it. They don't like it because they have SE, but it's a demon. So in today's class, I'll be sharing a little bit more of exactly what we're looking for when we're going through our checklist and typing somebody and all the little different gotchas that we got to try and jump through. All right, let's jump over to the Google just so we know how to do it wrong. The SE, risk-taking, tactical problem-solving that desires quick results. What the hell does that mean? They're not always in agreement with rules and regulations because they're gangsters and thugs. Uh, introverted sensing, have a deep sense of duty because they're the cops. Dedicated to everything they do and are very dependable. Okay, so I know an SI guy and he's not dedicated to everything he does and is not dependable. So does he not have SI? We, we get what it's saying, but this is mud. It's slippery. You go to try and build on this, and it, gosh, it breaks down so fast. Uh, look at this image here. So what is this? What? Uh, okay, so they got like a Punnett square going on here. All right, so sure, this is kind of going in the right direction of it. It's not giving a list of anecdotes. Now, it's, it's a little bit harder to understand because you don't have the story to it, you know? Um, but this is kind of breaking it down of like in coins. So this, where is this from? Um, oh, look at that. Personality Cafe. How about that? Ooh, an ad. God, running forums are hard. I, I, don't, I don't ever recommend it. So this Punnett square thing is exactly what we figured out years ago that makes it work. You've got to separate things in coins. SI is this, therefore it's in contrast to SE, therefore it's in contrast to NE, therefore it's in contrast to NI. And like you can't understand any one of these coins unless you understand all four of them. Yeah, you know, just looking at that, for example, SI and NI have more in common with each other because they're both serving the human need of organizing. Then SE and NE have more in common because they're both serving the human need of gathering. Oh, but wait a minute, then NE and NI have more in common together because they're both abstract. Then SE and SI have, so you see what I mean? It really depends on what you're looking at, what your priority is. All right, let's make this a little bit more real, a little bit more tangible so you can really own what the SE and SI is. So here comes the anecdote. Here's a story. This is just to give you the feeling of what these functions are like. So I don't want to see this like fucking written out and put on a Google image someday because this is not literal. This is just to help you kind of step into what it feels like to have these functions, whether you have SE or SI, high or low, whatever, doesn't matter. Imagine you're going over to a friend's house. You walk into their house and you see all their new stuff, their couch, their furniture, their dog, the floor, and you're noticing, oh, that's better than mine. Oh, I have a better one of those. So you're just taking in the facts and then you're comparing them. That's it. That first 30 seconds when you walk into someone's house is a high SE moment. Whether you have whatever function or whatever order, that's what SE is doing all day. Or lead, you know, somebody with lead SE. So very competitive, which is why the SEs do have such a competitive nature about them. Now picture for SI. Say you go into the kitchen with your friend and you're going to cook, uh, you know, a pie or Thanksgiving dinner. Something that requires a whole, like, little shit list to go through. So it's not something that you can just intuitively, you know, you're not just cooking eggs. It's not something you can just intuitively guess. It's not just something you can randomly try. Like, you have to go through a very structured checklist. And this is the first time you've ever done it. So you're not caring about the why. You're not trying to understand, now, why do these ingredients seem to be put in at this time and then put in that way and then stirred and then these are cooked and then these are recooked? Like, you're not trying to figure out the concepts and the workings of why this is put together or how this is put together. You're just like, shit, I got to get this meal cooked. I got two hours. I got to go down this list and get it done. Picture how much you're panically depending on that SI list. You want the sensory written out line by line and very clear because you don't have any N in this game to jump, to understand. If somebody leaves a line out, you're going to fucking panic because you're like, how the hell would I know? So that's what a lead SI is going through all day. All right, so somebody comes at you and you got to type them and you got to figure out, is this SE or SI? And they're not like a lead SE or a lead SI, so it's not like slappingly obvious to you. Here's kind of the checklist we go through. Number one, the most important thing is actually to deal with yourself. And that is knowing that everybody can do everything, expecting everyone to do everything. The SE guy can SI, the SI guy can SE. So you have to be emotionally ready for that. Otherwise, you're going to get locked into bias land, anecdote land. And then from there, it's chopping down from easiest to hardest. 
from the most clear working your way down to unclear are you organizing yes or no or are you gathering yes or no and then you know that by getting to know a person over a long period of time because when they get under stress they will run to their savior so for example when somebody who gets into a problem they're like all right you know what fuck this check the facts what's it say where's the facts pull it up pull it up on the internet let's read it where are the facts and then somebody who's more lead end is gonna be like you know what fuck these facts here's really what's going on we know the pattern we know the concept this always happens the facts always change and they'll run and they'll dig in on their end and that is when they really expose themselves and that is where you can confidently go all right i see you and that ties into number three as well like you got to know the difference between the savior and the demon because again using an istp for an example they can have very very high se very good se but that still technically could be a demon So you'll see a person using SE all day long, but they could actually have N as a savior and that will give them away with that organizing factor. Again, when the person is under stress or they're having to really prove themselves or they're, or, you know, maybe it's a positive stress where they're really trying to show off these, we call them sensor reports and everybody does them. How well you do them or what degree you do them kind of depends on how high or low your functions are. But a sensor report is people will just start rattling through the facts and they're either using the facts to back up their end, throwing out facts in like a shit mess because it's SE or they're lining it up because they have SI. And so you got to see this a few times. That's why it takes hours to watch people until their little sensor reports come out. So for example, just looking back at these Google images here, now the the Punnett Square guy that I referenced, again, this is just an anecdote, but somebody that's organizing the information like that, this is somebody that's thought it through. They've organized it. They've limited it. They've narrowed it down. You know, this is a SI feature. Doesn't that technically mean that they have SI? You know, maybe they learned to do that because they went to college. So you got to kind of watch for that. But if you're looking for patterns of behavior of like when this person is proving their case, they're bringing out information that is connected. There's a line by line. I can tell they've thought of this before. And here's also what's interesting. When they tell the same damn story six months later to somebody else, they bring out the same facts, the same points, and the same order. You know, the SI guy that just tells the same damn story over and over and over, he's just drawing from the same bucket of information. So the SE guy, he can have literally the same information because he's also grabbing from sensory. Anybody can have anything. But it's usually kind of this shotgun blast. This kind of just grabbing a handful and throwing it at your face. So the SE sensor report is usually just this shit mess of facts thrown at you. And the SI report is usually this kind of this line by line pre thought out list of facts of what happened. So bottom line is you're looking for the person's point of view. When they're spitting out their sensory, you're like, why are you spitting that out? What is your point? Where are you going with that? All right, if you got 1% of that, you're doing good because we're going to go over this again and again in repetition.